welcome to Backwoods Florida Adventures. This continuation of our Toyota Overland, Toyota Tundra Overlander build. And today we got a major upgrade. We're gonna need some tools. And that's the first thing I'm gonna show you. It's gonna be pretty extreme, guys. We're gonna need angle grinder, and some cutoff wheels, impacts, and of all things, a sawzall. So what we're doing today, guys, is installing this new warm, worn slimline bumper, the semi-hidden, and a Smittybilt 12,000 pound winch. Just unbox that, that was very well packaged, by the way. Very well packaged on the Smittybilt. Uh, worn, mm, not so much. It was just tossed in a box, uh, taped back up, the instructions are all crinkled up. Uh, it was a mess. So here's the Tundra, and um, we're going to start taking the front end of this thing apart. So, the main reason I'm doing this video is because when I was getting ready to purchase this uh, particular uh, bumper and winch combo, I couldn't find anything on YouTube that gave me any kind of detailed uh, video directions on how to install either one so uh, I could find this the how to put the Smitty built together in a different type of bumper like on a Jeep but not in a Tundra today is a 2021 Tundra if you've been watching along if not hey hit that subscribe button go back and look at our videos list and I'll show you a lot of the stuff that we already did to it some of the stuff I have not covered yet and today I'm gonna cover that really quick we did put a leveling kit on this truck Okay, you can see we have a two and a half inch spacers right up in here in the front and in the back there's leaf spring so it's two inch blocks we went with the uh, HD series 10 spoke wheels okay and I upgraded the tire size to 295 70 R18 which I heard most people say would not rub on this truck well I had it you got to take off the little front mud flap and the rear mud flap on that front tire and that corrected most of my problem but then i had a realigned and now i'm scrubbing here but we got to take that piece off anyway today so that's a good opportunity to try to modify that a bit but other than that it only does it when it's in reverse uh it only does it in reverse so again on the back see we got two inch blocks there and I did order this truck with the rear sway bar All right. so it's been a sweet truck so far I haven't had any issues other than I didn't some of you Tundra guys already know the gas light the low fuel light doesn't come on on these trucks till your computer says you're zero miles till empty but I did completely refuel at that point it has a 38 gallon tank took 31 gallons when the light came on so i still had you know seven gallons of gas so i guess that's about the same it's just kind of the dte thing is way off on the when they upgraded the tanks on these things okay so we're going to get after it it's probably going to be a long video but you guys that are going to want to do this yourself are going to want to watch it because i'm going to show you every step okay first thing we got to do is remove the grill and it's pretty easy there's a couple of these little pop-up guys like this both of these ends blade of a screwdriver or knife under there pop those out we're gonna mark a piece of cardboard i'll show you that in a little bit and unfortunately i opened this little door up last night and uh so to get to this wiring harness right here to disconnect what i think is attached to the grill Possibly not. I think this is going in my radar up front. I didn't snap it back in and I drove the store this morning. So it may be laying down in here somewhere or maybe on a road. We'll see. Now I'm going to remove these uh, four 10 millimeter bolts right across the top. I 
All right, the old bolts are out. Let's see if it moves at all. It's kind of hanging on a headlight over here. Okay, the next item is to remove this one little plastic clip right here that holds the suspender liner into the frame. And we'll do that on both sides. Yeah, try again. There's 17 millimeters. I'm gonna break them loose with the ratchet. Quite a bit of torque on them. Switch my socket over to the impact. Of course, we're going to save all this. Okay, next thing you need to do is remove these three bolts for the front of the skid plate I am going to remove the entire skid plate because I've already got a little damage on it so I'm gonna leave this one connected I need a little bigger socket and an extension to get to the back two mountain holes but these are the only three you have to take loose to get to uh, the bumper off All right, guys, so we're down to the point we're taking those bumper nuts off. There is very little access to get in there. You're between the, the frame of the truck and the crash bar in the bumper. And to save time, Home Depot's right down the street. I went and got a ratcheting box in wrench from Husky from Home Depot. I like their tools. Uh, nowadays lifetime warranty something goes wrong with it, you take them back especially something with moving parts in it like this uh, you know probability that you might break that um, this one I like because you don't have to turn it over to change the direction it's got a little flipper thing you can change the direction right there uh, some of the other older ones I have you have to flip the wrench over to do it but I decided to go spend $18 on this wrench other than spend the next two hours taking all eight of those nuts off a about a one and a half inch shaft uh at a quarter return or less per time per you know off and on and off and on the, on the bolt so if you want to do this project i would suggest either if you don't already have one of these go ahead and buy one before you start save you some time so hopefully i can show you what i mean about the access to these if you're right up against this so you need a deep well to get all the way down to the nut but you then you can't get the deep well you can't get the ratchet back off of it so you run into that deal so i already broke most of these loose but this is going to make it a lot easier to get them off you don't have a whole lot of room in there All right, so I'm going to take you under the tundra to show you what I had to do to get to the fog lamp harness up in here. I had to take all the bolts that were holding these the inside lower fender skirts for the left and right side. I had to take them all loose so that I can move this back far enough to get in here and release this. I had to end up cutting this one off because I couldn't get it loose. The other one came out fine so you can get to the plug and uh, on these plugs you squeeze the bottom tab on the plug to get it loose so there's a bottom tab that sits in here and there's water running out of that thing but you squeeze that bottom one and pull it straight out and that'll get your fog lamps if you have fog lamps you're gonna have to do that before you remove the bumper a bumper doesn't seem very heavy I've only got one nut holding it up right now 
so what I'm gonna do next and let's see this one I I took the uh, defender liner out altogether but in the process of doing that get out here and show you real quick the process of doing that I broke one of the little tabs off of it hopefully that's no big deal I can put it back in and this one I already had to modify a little bit with the torch keep it from rubbing and I think it's still rubbing a little bit but we may actually trim piece out of this in that little area anyway probably gonna end up trimming this little area out with the, with the Dremel keep that uh, tire from rubbing in reverse off all right so we have a bunch of work to do inside here and that's going to be in our next steps now this one should just come right off here now it's still like tabs or something holding it now we gotta lift up on those must have some kind of a lock in there we go they do have a little tab in there so sorry. left side one we gotta work on that one too so we're about a third of the way done so what I'm going to do now is we're going to separate the bumper cover from the crash bar and the supports and that's 12 millimeter All right, one screw there I don't think I need to take that one out these come out pretty easily with your impact. Do the top ones first. We'll roll it. Put the one on the bottom. Again, having this on some cardboard, not to scratch up your bumper. Save those bolts, put them on our board. We're making an old crash bar to separate. here's where the directions for this are wrong it says these bolts are 14 millimeter they are not they're 17 I tried to use it straight up impact but that didn't work I have to break them first the regular ratchet so these side plates here we're gonna need those and the hardware so let's go ahead now that is a 14 millimeter I went around and broke them first with the ratchet let's save all the nuts Alright guys, so that completes the disassembly of the Tundra and its stock parts. Okay, and I'm going to take you inside and show you, oh god, poor Tundra. Oh, it's brand new. It's missing its nose, getting a nose job today. Okay, so here's all of what we're left with. That's the basically the bumper cover. Okay, we're going to have to do some mods to that also. 
here are your two side brackets that support your your uh, both ends of your bumpers where your fog lights if you have them if you don't you're still going to have those pieces there where those go and then uh, we're going to start strapping these guys back to some uh, back into the bumper actually but I wanted to show you real quick uh, what we're doing with all the hardware that we're keeping here so over here in the garage I've been keeping every single bolt on this piece of cardboard here and this is a thick piece you can actually poke some of those right down into it which is uh, some leftover some other stuff we had ordered but I've marked every single bolt of where they go back to you know for skid plate fender bumper bumper nuts bumper crash bar uh, mount to where and where they came from originally so that I make sure I'm getting the right hardware back in the right place I would suggest uh, you do the same because there's a lot of different types of bolts and screws and nuts They're also not real clear on which way these things face. Okay, so from what I can determine, this may or not be correct. I'm hoping I got these look like they're faced right because this is going to flip this way. Okay, and then it's going to fit onto those right there like that. So that should be correct. We're not going to totally tighten these though because we need to be able to adjust this when we get it back on there. So I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm just going to run those down. I'm not going to totally tighten them so we can still adjust them. You notice all that stuff slotted so we can adjust the fitment of this later. So here I'm going to use my oscillating saw with a fine fine toothed uh, blade on it and I'm going to go ahead and we're going to cut inside the blue line tape and I know this is scary part guys this is a brand new truck okay don't even have 10,000 miles on it yet but we're going to go ahead and cut this center section right on out of here and I'm going to try to do it carefully but I think this type of saw is going to be your best bet if you don't have one of these I would suggest renting one, um, but or you can use a sawzall. But I'm telling you, you're probably going to make a mess with a sawzall. So let's give it a shot. I may have to turn around this way. front rib of the bumper to make room for the winch controller and I'm going to use a cordless angle grinder with this metal cutoff wheel I'm going to cut the top first to do 
a little quick dry fit of this thing and get it somewhat adjusted before I put this behemoth on here, which I don't even know if I can get that on there by myself. I may have to wait to another day. But I was having some fitment issues. And you can see right here, I popped this, this little valance right here off. And this was off like over an inch before I started. I popped the, the valance off there. And um, so I could get access to these bolts right down in here to adjust where the bumper cover sits on the bumper bracket. It's just attached to the brand new plate that comes with the Warren. Okay, right there. See it on that side also. And, uh, you know, it's sticking out farther than what it did before. And I got it a little closer on this side. Um, because these holes, you can see right there, they're slotted here. So I loosened the three that are holding it right now up and um, I don't think that little 10 millimeter is hitting anything but could be. Well, let, me, let me dig under there and see if there's, I think I got these slid all the way to the very back of their slots though. Um, and there is some flex to that thing. Um, it's almost like there's just a little too much bend in this bracket right here. So I made sure it's tight, like it's going to be when at the final fitment, so I could adjust the up and down using these guys while I can still get to them. Because once I put that winch bumper on here, you're not going to be able to get to these. They don't tell you that in the directions either. This is something I discovered, so hopefully it's helping you guys out when you got to do this yourself. Now this is a 2021 Tundra. Could be some slight difference. I would doubt very seriously that it would be that much difference from a 2020 or even a 2014. But again, I think I'm just going to have to end up living with it. And actually, that bumper being a little bit further forward might just solve my rubbing issues all by itself um so decisions to make all right remember we had a rubbing issue right here with it touching so now that 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 bumper's you know a half inch further forward i'll snap that valance back on in a second i'll show you um, okay, here's the other thing I noticed that's not explained anywhere in the directions. So there are the bolt holes for the new uh, Warren bumper. I've already got my winch installed, wired, ready to go. Is that once you get that thing setting on these four bolts right here, access to those bolts is going to be very limited. Now. What it used to have, I'm gonna show you, was this cross piece right here, this little cross member. This was sitting right here. All right, man, that was gonna make it really, really tight to get in there. So I just took this, the uh, six 10 millimeter nuts that were on this guy here, pull it off, set it to the side, and that'll open it up where you can get down in there. They're hard enough to get to as it is, and once that big bumper's sitting in there, it's completely closed up on the bottom. So you're not gonna get to it from the bottom, period. The only way you're gonna get to it is from the top. Again, not explained in the directions. That's why I'm here for you guys. I'm here for you. I'm making all these, these uh, discoveries for you. So you don't have to. All, also, down here where I cut this piece of steel, I repainted those bare edges. We've got this truck out on the beach all the time and I uh, don't want any exposed metal on it uh, around that salt. That's as close as I could get it. All right. I just kind of jacked it up a little bit more. I might could tilt it back. I don't think there's any more slop in those screws. Could tilt it forward just a little bit to make this line a bit more even, but that's something we can work on pretty easily just by popping these valances back off 
course it's not that easy and it's a little worse on this side you can see it right there and it's about yeah, a finger's width a little more maybe five eighths of an inch that's as close as I can get it to uh, back to its original position so a little disappointed there that uh, I've looked at every other way to adjust this thing and the only other way I'm gonna get it further back is to elongate some of the holes you can see them here I hope see it right there to elongate that hole more so I can push the bumper back further but all in all doing a, a uh, modification of this uh, caliber not terrible I can live with it this is not a show truck I'm putting this bumper on here so I can take it off in the woods and not worry about getting stuck so we'll uh, try to continue on now again like I said I put these these bolts two of these bolts on just so I could get all these adjustments done and get these bolts over here tight and get that bumper pretty much where I need it now because these all these slots here or side to side adjustment they have very little up and down adjustment so we can still tweak those a little bit after we put the warrant on um, I don't know if that's gonna happen today because I don't know if I can lift it and get it up there I'm gonna got a floor jack I'm gonna try to brace it up see if we can jack it up on there but uh, 50 50 whether that's gonna work or not I actually may pull these valances back off again just to give me more wiggle room with this thing I don't know all right little struggle I got it on there got it started anyway so whew, I was dreading that part but it's in all right guys next morning yeah, it ran out of daylight yesterday. Put back the the uh, skid plate. I did paint that while I had it off of there, along with the tow hooks. So all that is ready to go. Now there is a space now between the bumper and the skid plate. We may make something custom to go in that space. I don't know. That's, if that was straight, it would be really easy, but it's got this little hump in it right there. So I don't know how easy that's going to be to connect the two or if it's even worth messing with. So that's what it looks like in there. All right, so truck's back together. We got the synthetic line hooked up. Now we got to spool it. So that'll be next. Directions say to use the wired remote for the first operation. <clears throat> so that's what we're gonna do. Which is on. Alrighty. It also says to put some tension on this line when you're pulling in so we're going to drag our side by side from way out there at the end of the rope and make sure it coils evenly onto the spool inside <laughs> 